Yeah, what's up you guys? This is Gasson and I'm actually at Supercell here in Finland and I'm talking to one of the top guys over here at the Supercell headquarters. So this is pretty much a request from a lot of you guys at, um, at home that have been asking me uh, some of your questions about clouds and hero AIs and all that stuff. So today I wanted to actually talk to one of the guys at Supercell and give you some information and or ask you some of these questions that you've been asking me so that I can relay that to you guys. Yeah. So um, a lot of the players in the top have been asking about clouds. Yeah. Um, the way it is now, I've actually had a chance to get up to 4,000 cups and raid my way up there and see how it is actually um, that high and what the clouds are like. And it is pretty bad. Some people, you know, if they're not doing six hour sessions, um, they only have enough time to do one one session and then the rest of the day you know they can't get on because of work or school or whatever yeah but um it can get really rough up there especially if they're only getting one cup offers and then they're getting destroyed you know by someone only like maybe 50 or 100 cups lower than them getting uh you know a 40 cup offer mm. so i mean i guess my question uh to you is what what do you guys have planned or what can you do to alleviate some of the um, stress for these players that are trying to get up there? Yeah, um, I, I guess to start, it's it's worth mentioning that we're very aware, very, very aware of the problems at the very top level matchmaking and long time spent in the clouds and the sort of uh, unfair seeming trophy offers. And um, and it's the, the that level in the matchmaking is, is quite a special place. It's uh, very, very, very few people actually get up there, and they're still bound by the same rules of you know the the Elo scoring system by the matchmaking and and how they're put together, and like ultimately the the core of the issue is just it's all numbers. When you get that high, and you have so few people, and they're doing all they can to optimize their online time or shield time, then there just is not enough people available to attack versus right. the amount of people that are waiting to attack. And there, there is a very strong, we see it as clear as day um, when we're looking at the matchmaking statistics, sort of around uh, 3,500 cups and after, the amount of targets goes below the uh, amount of people waiting for targets. And the higher you go, the longer you have to wait. And it's just it's just straight numbers. So, And, and it's interesting that you mentioned the sort of, um, like the, the, the length of sessions that they can do and the amount of time that they spend offline because it really is sort of a two-edged sword with the high-level matchmaking. So if we want to offer people uh, more targets, then the other side of this coin is that we're going to have to make them go offline more often. Shorter mm -hmm. personal breaks, right. shorter sessions. Right. Um, and, the, and the trophy matching, that's just completely based off the ELO system. Now, I remember you talking about this. You said at one point uh, some of the top players were actually pulling away from, like, being, being uh, what was the term you used, that they weren't going to be untouchable? <laughs> they were going to be untouchable. For, well, the well it, it's just sort of the curve of, of the, um, the, the, the scoring of the ELO. And it was getting, like, so it, it's, it's a bit complicated. I don't want to get too technical about it, but it's, 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 it's um, how, how can I put it? It's like, it, it's really difficult because, I mean, there, there, there's only so much we can do at the very top level because, you know, you have to understand that, that the way these players at the very highest end of the game play is sort of how they're being matched. Like, so how these people behave um, in terms of how long they stay online or the way they, they manage their shields, like they're, the targets that they want to get matched with are doing the same exact thing. So there's just, you know, such a shortage of, such a shortage of targets that we can supply to these people that, you know, we can't really just manufacture targets. You know, if, if we want to, them to have more targets and we have to force them into the matchmaking more often and 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 you know it's already it's already getting quite strict and we wouldn't want to make it too too strict um and and you've probably been noticing that that the trophy levels have been getting higher and higher and i've been sort of describing this as this you know this mountain rising up from the bottom few inches because there's more people coming into the game the trophies are, are cir circulating upwards and we've been making matchmaking changes at the same time to try to bring down the peaks and to keep it more of a more of a level playing field, right? Because right. at, at the end of the day, that. yeah, that. that that's the most that's the best thing that we can actually try to do, just in terms of how we're coding the matchmaking. Is the the more fair or the fairer that we make the 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 very top, the more targets will be circulating, and the less of these extreme trophy offers that they're going to get, because those extreme trophy offers and those very long waiting times, they're just completely an artifact that falls out of when you have this very sharp peak, very few people, very uh, small times in the matchmaking queue. There's not really anything else we can do about it. So, but I mean, it's something, like I said, we're very aware of the problem. We're looking at it constantly and trying to think of what we can do. 
Okay. But we, I mean, we understand that it's not very fun up there. Yeah, so. and that's, that's probably not an easy fix. You know, a lot of people are trying to get up there, and there's just no no one to to fight really. Yeah, yeah, and and this is something that we've been that we've been talking about. You know, are there other solutions we can come up to this? Other ways we can let people fight, let people match against each other that won't be so dependent on this matchmaking system that's very stretched up at the very top. Okay. Well, thank you. That, I'm sure that that will help somebody. Out. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. It's a very difficult subject. Okay, and uh, I did a video pretty recently showing the heroes just acting, being disobedient. Yeah. And uh, uh, you told me some stuff about uh, what happened there, but I mean, I wanted to, a to ask you again, so yeah. that just so that a lot of people out there that might have the same problem can get an answer about this, but it's uh, regarding the hero AI and specifically the, wi uh, the uh, queen. Yeah. The queen. Yeah. Because she goes for walls like <laughs> no one's business. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's so, fun. yeah, we saw the video, and, and I was telling you earlier that, that when I saw that video, I'm like, holy holy moly. Like, this yeah. is like, I would have been mad if this happened to me. Um, but, yeah, we actually took the replay, and we were looking at it, um, looking at the, you know, get some debug lines. How's the pathfinding going? And, 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 you know, for the king, it was just unfortunate the way the troop combat was working. He was trying to get pulled into troop combat and then forgetting about it and, you know, just going back and forth the defending king. So that was just, you know, bad luck. Uh, the Archer Queen is a very special unit because she has this five tile range and it's so much greater than everything else in the game. But at the same time, she's using the same logic as, for example, the archers or the wizards that have just this, this three tile range. So, I mean, for the most part, it works out okay, but you have to realize that when you have in your video was a fantastic example when you have you know millions of battles happening every single day the the small percentage of chance that they're going to do something stupid is going to happen mm -hmm. and it's going to happen you know anybody can get hit by that so it the examples like what you posted with the with the video that show like they're making a clearly suboptimal choice those are actually pretty valuable to us because yeah. we can pull those out we can look at what's the ai doing at this point and we can try to pinpoint the places where we can improve and i think the heroes because they're you know relatively recent and they're relatively different from the other troops, there's something that we can we can improve on even further. Okay, so yeah. you guys are actually working on that. Yeah, yeah. Like when we saw the video, we pulled the replay off of the production server. Yeah, that was we, interesting. We, we were oh. crowded around and we were watching it and <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, okay, and my last question is actually about the new update. Uh, you guys have these new traps that you're bringing out for us and. Um, it looks like they are ground and air mm -hmm. types of uh, skeletons that come out of the coffins. Or <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe you can tell us about that because I'm actually interested to know, you know, this could potentially change a lot of base designs to utilize this. Yeah. You know, so maybe you can expand on it a little bit. Yeah, I think this is probably going to be, you know, it's definitely the most, the most complex trap that we put out there. And I think people are going to find a lot of different ways they can use it. And, um, and you know, we can never tell until it goes live. And we're really interested to see how people in all different ranges are going to use this troop. And it's actually, or this trap, and it's actually going to be um, available relatively early in terms of new content putting into the game, Town Hall 8. And you actually get two of these traps. So we think it's actually going to be something that, that, you know, mixes up the battle a bit and, and uh, will we'll make it more interesting. And, and we're really interested to see how people are going to use it at, at, at the Town Hall 10 level, especially when they have three of these yeah. traps and there's a lot more concern over the air-ground balance. So, Are you guys worried that that might cause a little bit more problems by doing that, you know, with uh, <laughs> hero AI and all that stuff? Oh, yeah, the, 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 the troop on But now it'd be, it probably be, would, would be more justified now because they're meant to pull them away. Yeah, they're meant, they're meant to distract. <laughs> that's, that's the whole thing. They're not, they're not troops for damage. They're troops just to, just to distract troops, try to make them retarget, try to mess up the, the attacker's plan. So, I mean, we don't know really how it's going to go, but, but it's, it's, it seems something interesting, and we want to we wanna see what happens. So. All right. Yeah. Hey, you know what? That's awesome. Um, I'm really looking forward to the update, and hopefully you guys are enjoying it too if it's uh, released for you already or if you're waiting for it to come out. But uh, thank you guys for watching. This is Gasson, and thank you also. Yeah, thank you for your videos. You always make us <laughs> smile, so keep them coming. Thank you. Thanks. All right, you guys.